All right, if you would be, if you would turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, 17th chapter, <coughs> verse 1. We would like to uh, talk to you a little bit and read some scriptures concerning offenses. And uh, in, this, in this and in other places there, uh, uh, we see the terrible uh, results of offenses. And, uh, so this morning, I hope that it will be a blessing and a, and a good thought that we can uh, uh, remember. So in verse 1 of chapter 17, uh, and it says here that Jesus teaches forgiveness. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. So we see this morning as we start reading that there is, there is a, an evil end to those that offend uh, Christians. Uh, he speaks in this uh, some of the scriptures that we're going to talk to about the little ones in verse 2 there and we uh, see that the little ones in some of the places are those that are saved in other places there's the ones that are being uh, that are too young for this and so for salvation but uh, people uh, don't understand what offenses uh, the meaning of it and what it carries, but it carries the meaning of woe. And this meaning of woe means to uh, terrorize, it means to uh, chastise, and all of these things. And woe is a terrible word when you get to looking at it. So he said here that they will, they will come, these offenses, but woe unto him to whom they come. And we this morning uh, sometimes wonder about when we have these offenses and uh, people try to uh, cut us down or whatever, we wonder why that the Lord uh, permits this. Well, one thing that it will help you in is to have patience. And it will, will help you to be a greater witness because when one comes to you uh, and uh, he wants to grumble about what you're doing or grumble about this or try to stir you into a, a false religion or something like that, you have the privilege then of uh, a witnessing to him. And this is pleasing to the Lord. And this is sometimes why that we have these problems because that uh, there's people right around us that we, they think they're saved but they're not. And uh, we see some of them that are bearing a fruit, but it's not the fruit that uh, God would have them to bear. And so we need to be very particular about how that we, uh, if someone does these things to us, what our actions is, because the Christian action attitude is that Christ died for us when we were offending Him and, uh, and His Word and so we should be able to uh, act in the same way Christ-like and, and try to encourage these people because, you know, uh, uh, Jesus spoke about one time slap, uh, slapping in the face and turn the other side. So when we have this opportunity, we need to think, well, uh, I was there. I was there once, and who knows, you know, uh, this little tongue, as James says, it's a on hell far, it's a hell of fire, and it puts out stuff that sometimes we can't control. Uh, before we can control it, this son got it out there, and so uh, it's sort of like. A, and I heard this example of of a, of something that you say. It's like toothpaste. Once it's squirted out, you can't get it back into the tube without making a mess. And so, you know, that's what we need to very, very carefully be careful about is, is uh, offending those that offend us. So he said here in verse 2, talking about the condition of this man that offends these <clears throat> little children, he says, it were better for him that a millstone were hang about his neck and he cast into the sea that 
he he should offend one of these little ones. And the the the, the stone that he's talking about, I was looking this millstone up, and I know I know the millstone that he's talking about, but I've never seen the one that uh, that's that he that it's in the Bible. It's called a I believe it's an ass stone. Or, and I don't know what they did with it, where they put it around the, the mule's neck to keep him from running off or what. But uh, the millstone I know of is two big grinding rocks, two big rocks, and they, they match, they come together, and the corn and the wheat goes through that, and it makes meal and it makes flour. And so he's saying here this morning, it's better... Uh, it's better that uh, uh, that than to have this happen to you. So he said, it's were better for him that a millstone hung about his neck and he cast into the sea, and uh, then that he should offend one of these little ones. Now take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. Now. There is a way to rebuke, and there is an ugly way to rebuke. And we can we could be just like him and return the thing and say, you so and so and so and so. But no, that's not the way that the Lord's talking for us to do. Right. But we should this morning with a with a loving heart talk to the person and ask, Well, if I've offended you, then I ask you to forgive me. But you know, a lot of times uh, we haven't offended them, and so and gives us, like I said, Bible, and gives us the opportunity to be a witness to those people. And so he said here, uh, here he said, take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And so this is something that we can that we can uh, really work on this morning is uh, one that that accuses us of trespassing against them, if they if they repent, if they say, well, I'm sorry, and, and if we go about it in, the, in such a way that we don't uh, really act like a devil or something, but just smile and say, you know, uh, like Jesus, uh, Jesus did to uh, the, the ones that was on the cross beside of him, right. and when they were lamb bamming and talking to him, but one of them repented. And he said, "This day thou shalt be with me in heaven." And and so uh, this is this is the attitude that we need to have when when we are uh, caught up in something like this. We need to uh, come right back at them with uh, uh, something that is nice and mild. Because you know, I've heard the old adage: you can catch more flies with honey than you can vinegar. Mm. And so, if you can be nice and you can be polite. Because it don't take a bit more. Only thing is, you just gotta bite your tongue sometimes. But you, you can be nice and and be kind about this, and you can gain a whole lot more than you can lose. And so he said here in verse four, and if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turns again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Now. I want you to see something here, if I, if I can find it, just when I wrote it down, I wanted to, uh, to, uh, to tell you this, and, and I'm sure that you know it, but in one of the scriptures, I thought I wrote it down, but anyway, one of the scriptures, he says, Peter asked him, he said, do I forgive him seven times? And uh, Jesus said unto him, 70 times seven. And so this, by the time you get through forgiving him that many times in a day, the day's over. And so you can start another day the next day and, and start giving. If he asks you forgiveness and, and he says here, hey, you haven't got one thing to do, and that's forgive him. And that's the same way with us, uh, with our salvation. Listen, if the Lord spoke to our hearts and we ask for forgiveness for our sins, listen, he'll forgive those sins. And, uh, uh, and, and, and you know, a lot of times we don't get by with seven times in a day. A lot of times it takes a whole lot more than that to, to get through the day. And so every time that we, we do this, we need to ask forgiveness. And he's, he's able and just to forgive us of these. So here in verse 5, And the apostle said unto him, unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If he had faith of a grain of mustard seed, 
You might say unto the sycam tree, Be thou plucked up by the roots, be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. And notice here what he compares them to is a is a, a mustard seed, which is a very very small a very small thing. But anyway, I want you to turn with me if you would now, and I'm going to read just a little bit in Matthew 26. I should have done done this, but I want to read something in Matthew 26 and verse 24. The Son of Man, and this is this is Jesus talking about Judas Iscariot. And, and uh, in verse 23, he's talking about where he dipped in the, uh, the, uh, the saw. And in verse 23, and he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man, in verse 24, goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Now, I got to thinking about this good if he'd never been born. Can you imagine? Can you imagine not being born? There's nothing there. Uh, and he's saying this this morning, and, and this is how dangerous this thing is uh, of, of offending. He says here, uh, if the Son of Man goeth as is written, and, and, and Judas had sold Jesus out, for 30 shackles or 30 pieces of, of silver. And he said to he sold it, he said to, to him, it's it's better or it's good. It's not better, but it's good if a man is not born. And so there's a terrible thing in that uh, that I can't even really grasp because uh, that's worse then uh, evidently that's worse than uh, some of the other wolves that we see. Or of course he says, Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. Now, Judas knew that he was the one that he was talking about. He knew it. And he was blinded so by the devil that he didn't do anything about it. Of course, he was foreordained to do this, but still, in our case, we are not in that in that category. But listen, we need to think upon this because that woe of or of, 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 of offenses is is awful. And here, if you if you look at this word woe, and you look in the Book of Revelations, uh. <laughs> It's a whole chapter of what the word woe carries. And so uh, it's, it's everything in this world because, and that's what's going to happen to this world and, and, then, and then it's going to be destroyed. But anyway, back in our lesson this morning, we want to uh, look at this in Revelation 8 uh, and verse 13. I've got to, something I want you to read. I want you to read here. 8 and verse 13 and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants inhabitants of the world or the earth by reason of other voices of the trumpet and of three angels which are yet to sound and so he goes on John goes on and tells about some of these things, and you can read, you can study it if you want to, or read it. But in chapter nine, uh, it tells about these three angels and what they what they say is going to happen. And over in, uh, I believe it is uh, 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 yeah, Revelations twelve twelve. I think it is. In verse 12 of Revelation 12, 12, he says, there, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And so that woe is for those that are staying back here after the, uh, the, the rapture 
and they are going to, to serve uh, the devil and they're going to have all of these wolves uh, and he says that woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the, of the sea for, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And so this morning these offenses are on their way and they're probably already here and we they've just not got really going good but I I, I see all of the all of the things that's happening with our government and the laws that they're making and all this. Listen, it's opening up the way for these offenses to come and these woes to come and they're they're getting us ready for the Antichrist to make his appearance. Now we'll we will be gone when he gets here. But the thing of it is we have to suffer through these these things that, that are going on in, uh, in in our life. So he said here in verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman Israel, which brought forth a man-child, and to the woman were given two wings of an eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time and time and a time uh, half a time from the face of the, of the serpent and these are talking about the last three and a half years of the tribulation period talking about Israel as as they try to escape the Antichrist but but the thing of it is these woes bring misery and discomfort and everything in this world on us and so if you would now turn back into chapter 17 uh, and I'll continue reading here in verse 7 but which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle uh, will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field go sit down to me and I will not rather say unto him make ready wherewith I may sup and girth thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken afterwards thou shalt eat and drink that he thanked his servant because he did the things that were commanded him, I trod not or I thank not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. And I read this for this, this right here, this, we are unprofitable Servants, and this this morning should tell us and show us where we're at as unprofitable servants, because uh, so many times we fail the Lord. So many times there is a a, a time that He would send wolves upon us and 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 and, 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 and do the things that these wolves call for. But Jesus Christ, our Savior, is right there by, the, by His side, and He is presenting his blood to the Lord Jesus, to God, and, and trying to give us, get us to uh, confess our sins and, and to get forgiveness because, uh, listen, that's the, that's the he's, our, he's our, our go-between between him and God. And so these, these, these things, these things that I'm talking about here, uh, we, we need to not do them. It's Matthew's Gospel in 18.1, let me read this to you. And uh, maybe get a little something out of this. Matthew 18. 1. 18. 1. Here we see him calling the little children. And at that time, in verse 1, at that time, at the same time, came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you, you are converted. Now, here, I don't think that he's talking to a, uh, a saved person. I think it's just a little child. But notice, he says, This is the condition that you have to be in except you be converted and become as little children. So ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now notice, whosoever therefore shall humble 
himself as this little child, and he's using this little child as an example. This is way, this is the way that we need to be before our enemies and before uh, uh, those that are uh, oppressing us and us. We need to have the humbleness of uh, in our hearts that we can we can talk to them but he says here whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven and whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me and so we see here that that we have to have a humble heart in order to uh, get along with this world and we have to be like a little child and they are humble because they're, 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 they don't know any difference because they haven't never been uh, 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 into something like that because they're too young. But now he said here, but whosoever, in verse 6, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones, I think it's talking about his say, the say, which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone will hang about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. And so again, we see this woe and we see that Jesus talking to them uh, uh, the, is, is putting, putting a serious thing onto them. But seven said, woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offense comes, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. So, wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off. Now, I've, I've, I've read some of this, and, and, the, and the, uh, the writer uh, says here, in this offense of the hand and the foot, he says that the hand and the foot cannot offend because uh, it comes with the with, with inside. But he says anyway, he's using this thing as an example. He's, he's wanting us to, to hear it, and he's wanting us to, to quit doing the offending. But he says here, uh, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halted or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And uh, so it's, 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 a, it's a warning and it's like these other woes and the, the things. Listen, there is there is there is a time coming when we're going to stand before God, and we're going to have to give an answer for all of these things that we're doing, and uh, we're going to lose. We're going to lose rewards. And like it is uh, with these offenses, we can gain rewards because if we keep our cool and try to be a blessing to that person that's just that is disgracing us. And, and try to help him. Listen, if he don't, if he don't, listen, we receive the reward. We'll get a reward for that because we are, 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 are being more Christ-like than if we would stand up and cuss back at him or hit him or bang on him or, or whatever. We are Christians. We're acting Christ-like. And so he said here, <clears throat> now, going on with the feet, he says, and if thine eyes offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell far. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, and here's the saying, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So, uh, you know, you have, it's, it's, it's a, it's a thing that we, as God's people, need to take uh, notice of and, and to uh, be uh, mindful of the things that uh, we have the opportunity to do. And so I think uh, I wanted to, uh, in Matthew 19, one more, one more place here, and I'll we'll hang it up. Matthew 19, 13. I'll read this to you. <clears throat> in verse 13 of Matthew 19, Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hand on them, and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer or allow little children, and forbid them not. 
to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And so again, we have to be very we have to be very careful of what we're doing because listen, sometimes we don't know what we're doing. Sometimes we don't understand what's going on with in, in, in another person's heart. And uh, listen, we don't know how to deal with it. And so the way to deal deal with it and be safe is to use your senses and 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 be Christ-like as best you can. And uh, I think that it would be much easier for you than to face all of those woes, those woes that are coming upon those that are disobedient to the Lord and to these good people. So this is our lesson this morning. We hope that something has been said that will will help you in some way. And I know the word, if you listen to it, it will help you. And so study, uh, study, study, and and um, uh, realize what uh, what kind of what kind of surroundings you have because you've got a surrounding of people that wants to offend you but also you've got a surrounding that gives you an opportunity to be a witness and to gain rewards and you can load your truck up but if you if you do it the other way and offend them again listen you're losing your reward. And so this is this is the thing about this is the thing about offending. Uh, so that's our lesson. Thank you all for this.